Hello everybody, my name is Rated RPG and welcome to Last Case, The Disappearance of Amanda Kane. This is an indie game. On game Jack stood so. at the window holding on to a glass of bourbon when the phone rang. Okay. He hesitated phone for a moment, choked down the rest of his drink, and went over to the desk. Some rich guy was looking for his runaway daughter. The money was good, and Jack sure as hell didn't have the luxury of being picky these days. The caller didn't leave him a lot of information to go on. He quickly wrote down two names, Amanda Kane, okay. the daughter, and the Pink Flamingo, some shady bar somewhere in New Harbor. The Pink Flamingo was Jack's best bet, but he had to find out the exact address. Pink Flamingo, for the win. Well, th this, this kind of position I'm right in right now in this game is like a euphemism of being lonely and stuff. And that's what I am feeling right now. For a now. second, Jack thought about calling Mary, but the idea left his head as fast as it had entered. See? It sounds like... Jack youth. looked at the picture of his old partner. Aww. It was his morbid little ritual before each new case. Morbid? A reminder that you can't cheat death. Morbid ritual? Are you the one who killed your partner? Jack opened the drawer and picked up his gun. <laughs> no. His old no. companion felt heavier than usual. Oh. He pulled the slide oh. back and let it snap back into place. Oh. Can I move? Oh no, I can't. I'm gonna check the entire place. Jack took the phone book from the shelf. The pink flamingo was down in East Village. Definitely not the right neighborhood for a young girl, he thought. It was time to give this, this classy so joint a visit. This is so lonely, to be honest. I mean, you're just some guy in an office and you lost your partner and stuff. And you have to feel kind of lonely. I mean, Jack opened I the door no and stepped out of his office. Next stop, the pink flamingo. This actually has a deeper meaning, but I'm kind of getting used to it yet. The streets were oh. quiet. Maybe it was the calm before the storm. This doesn't Jack sound good. To find out. This doesn't sound very good, to be honest. This doesn't sound good. Oh, everyone looks the same. Lol, someone's asleep. Oh. The place reeked of oh, yeah. cigarettes and cheap liquor. Not a place for pink flamingos. Maybe the owner was a bird lover, Jack thought. Two guys were sitting in a corner having a heated discussion about last night's game. Oh, Another those was two. passed out on one of the tables. Those two? Huh. I mean, someone's drunk right here, and this is me. I'm not gonna exit yet. I mean, I have a, I have a bun right here. And what? Oh shit! It went up. I have, a, I have a bun. I have a man bun. So I'm gonna. Uh, a drunk was sleeping on one of the tables. Jack had <laughs> been there, drowning his guilt in booze after his partner's death. Wait, did I? Did I really kill my partner? I have no idea, dude. This is... this is fucked up. He took a seat at the bar and ordered a bourbon. The effect of the last one was slowly wearing bourbon. off. I like the taste the barman of the was a scrawny looking fella. When Jack asked him about Amanda, he just looked at him and kept on wiping the bar. Is this Irish? Is this Irish? There is no Irish. such thing as free information. Jack dropped a 20 in the tip jar. The bartender just pointed at the back door and told Jack to talk to a guy named Samiri. Jack went to the back door and the barman bust the door open. It was never a good sign having to leave a the bar through the back there. door. This is, the, this is the type of games I like. Um, the story Samiri was really fixing an old van that was parked in an alley behind the pink flamingo. Jack shouted his name, but received no response. Samiri couldn't hear him over the loud music that was coming from the band's radio. Jack went over and turned the music off. 
Samiri came out under the van, told Jack to peace off and went back under. A little annoyed, Jack made another attempt to start a conversation. Once again, Samiri turned him down and told him to fuck off. Oh, he said fuck off, bitch. A little Should annoyed, I? Jack made another attempt to start a conversation. Once again, Samiri turned him down and told him to fuck off. So music's supposed to be here? Jack was really tired of playing games. He kicked the van as hard as he could. The Jack leader holding up the van almost jumped out of place. He now had Samiri's full attention. He came out under the van, this time with a pipe in his hand. He was screaming something about drugs and a payment for a guy named Quentus. Jack Quentus? raised his gun and asked Samiri to be so kind as to put the pipe down. Oh. He made clear that he wasn't there because of Mr. Quentus. After a, for the most part, polite conversation, Jack had all the information he needed. People become really chatty as soon as someone holds a gun to their face. Jack was done there and went back to his car. Amanda and her boyfriend Trevor were on the run from her father. They had cleared out one of his accounts and had taken off. Jack now had the address of the Lovebirds hideout, a cabin outside the city. He knew the area quite well. He and Mary went down to Lake Monte a lot before they divorced. Jack had left the car at the road and was slowly making his way to the cabin. The moon was much brighter than in the city. He thought. You gotta love royalty free music. The oh, lights yeah. in the cabin were out. Nobody seemed to be home. You gotta love royalty free music. Uh huh. Is this junk or. Oh, yeah, it is. The place was a mess. Chairs in the cabin door were lying scattered around in front of the cabin. Box. The fuse box was completely fried. Under it, Jack found a flashlight that seemed to be working. Is this a horror game now? This is supposed to be a psychological game, just most games I've always Jack played. Jack went inside to take a closer look. Yeah, you should. Jack was looking around the cabin. It became clear to him that they must have left in a hurry. Maybe Samiri had tipped them off. A strange green light was coming through the windows. Most of the furniture started to float in mid-air. Jack what? reached for his gun and ran outside. Jack couldn't hear a sound. The green light was pulling him. What? What? Lifting him up into what? the air. What the fuck? He was floating over the cabin when he lost consciousness. Ooh, spooky. Spooky green light. Music, man. That was it? That was it? That was it? You gotta be fucking kidding me, right? That was it? Really? That was it? Can't do anything anymore. That was it? <sighs> okay. Well. So much euphemism around this game revolves into my head right now. I can't even explain. Holy shit. Well. That was interesting. I hope there's a part two, because I really would love to play this game again. I mean, you can't even see my eye. I mean, this, hands down, was an amazing game with an amazing story. So yeah, that was it, I guess. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you.